Want to know what to do with that border design? Kimmy Bruner is here to show us Sea Curl Border Designs. Thanks, Linda. And we are so honored to have you here. You're an award-winning quilter. You've won Teacher of the Year twice. Mm -hmm. We're just really excited to have you teach us how to do this. Thank you, Linda. I really like Sea Curl Border Designs, and I do feel that they are among the most enduringly popular designs of all the classic designs because they are so adaptable, which makes them suitable for many different types of borders. And the, the way that you can have fun playing with them makes them suitable for many different kinds of quilters. Cool. You can quilt them out with feathers, you can quilt them with leaves, you can quilt them with flowers, and if you were to do that, you might want to stitch your spine out with green thread and then come back in and fill in with multicolored flowers. Oh, what a good idea. If you were doing a Christmas quilt, you could use a sea curl border stitched in green with holly leaves, come back in and throw in some red berries with the red thread. If you're doing a masculine quilt, maybe you'd want to quilt it with curling pine boughs and then come back in and throw in some pine cones to really make a lodge feel from that quilt. Um, like I said, they're very, very adaptable. They're very, very easy to stitch out. The design itself and the layout never changes. All that changes is the different designs that you use to embellish those basic spines. Cool. Well, we're excited about it. Let me show you a couple of different variations. My favorite way to stitch them out is with feathers. Mm -hmm. I love those gorgeous, lush Amish sea curl borders that just are so over the top. Everyone seems to like those. Mm -hmm. The quilt that is behind us today has kind of a classic layout of an Amish sea curl border. You can see those C's going up and down. Mm -hmm. The corners have some curved cross hatching motifs thrown in there. Oh, for I addition. saw that. I really like that. It adds a lot of interest, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It really dresses that Good quilt contrast. up and it's not difficult at all. I also brought another quilt that I'd like to show you that has kind of a little bit more relaxed version of a sea curl border. Layout is the same, but it's a little bit more informal and casual and twines its way around the quilt without such a, a stiff and formal look. Would you okay. like to see that? Yeah, let's take a look okay. at that. As you can see, this is an old and loved quilt. Still doesn't have a binding because I'm not a big fan of putting bindings on, so <laughs> don't ever come to my house and ask to see my binding technique. Um, this has a C curl border that's just a little bit less formal. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I've still got C's flipping up and down, up and down, as this border twines and curls its way around the quilt. I don't have anything special in the corners. It just turned the corner as it came to it and kept flipping up and down as it worked its way through. It gives that same feathery look, but just a little bit more laid back, a little bit less stress about the layout. Oh, it's beautiful. And I think The whole really quilt is beautiful. You just want to cuddle it. Yeah, you do. You want to go take a nap when you see this quilt, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Let me show you how I lay this out. And it's really, really easy. You just have to do a little bit of thinking beforehand. Okay. Um, st or draw your spines out and then just stitch them. You don't mm -hmm. have to follow the lines. You just have to generally stay in the area of the designs. The first thing that you want to think about is how much room do you need between the bottom of your spine and the edge of your space to be filled. Okay. If you're doing feathers, how much room do you need to make a nice looking feather? If you're doing leaves, how small can that leaf be before it just looks like a little blob of thread? So in this case, I've got about an inch of space required to stitch my feathers out so that they look nice. So I'm going to give myself a little guideline to fill. I'm just going to plop down a chalk or plop down a ruler and chalk myself just a little guideline all the way along so I know where to stop my spines. I'm going to do the same thing at the top of the border, but I'm going to add an extra quarter of an inch to this measurement to allow for my binding seam allowance. Oh yes, the binding. Because mm -hmm, we don't want to chop off the top of our feathers mm -hmm. when we're sewing on our binding. Mm -hmm. So up here, there's going to be an inch and a quarter of space. And I'm just going to chalk a little guideline. doesn't have to be any big deal. It's just kind of some training wheels for me to work within. The next thing I'm going to need is a larger circle template and a smaller circle template. Okay. The large circle goes in your corner and that fills that space. That's why you need a larger one mm -hmm. in the corner. You are going to butt that template up to those two outside guidelines that you chalked. And you're going to chalk about three quarters of the way around that large circle. That's going to fill your corner. Now you're done with your large circle. Grab your small circle and you lay it down right next to the chalked circle you just did. Continue that chalk line up and around, stitching a C that curls back towards your corner. The first C always curls back to the corner. Okay. Shift your template over, and this one came 
under, up, and around. Mm -hmm. This one is going to come up and around and under and another C. The opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Move it over, chalk again, move it over, chalk again, mm -hmm. all the way to the middle. So what you've got is a great big C in the corner and then C, 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 C tumbling along towards the center. These designs are almost always worked more easily from corner to center, and then you just fudge the middle when you get there. Okay. It's a whole lot easier than trying to turn the corner with the border. Mm -hmm. Let me show you a couple of different versions um, of how you can lay that border out depending on how much real estate you have to fill. Okay. If you have a narrower border and you don't have quite so much space to fill with your feathers or whatever you're stitching, you're going to put those C's just right next to each other in a straight line. Boom, 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 boom. This C would butt up against the bottom guideline. This C butts up against the top. Bottom, top, all the way from corner to center. This would work on maybe a five or six inch border. Mm -hmm. But when you've got a really wide border and you've got a whole bunch of real estate to fill, you can make a really deeply undulating curvy border. Here's your guideline down here. Here's your guideline up here. First C is butted up against that bottom guideline. Second C goes way up to the top, bottom, top. And as you can see, it gives you a really deeply curving, mm -hmm. undulating border that eats up a whole lot of space mm -hmm. and really fills your border up very quickly. It's beautiful. So there are a couple different ways for you to do what you need to do. When it comes to filling the center, you also have more options. In this case, my C ended here coming from this corner. My C ended here coming from this corner. I just put in a couple of little tiny spines and let the feathers drip down. That's pretty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just want to bang them together like they're butting heads in mm -hmm. a straight line. Perhaps you might wish to throw in a little feather wreath or a curved cross hatching design, anything else to eat up that space in the middle. Whatever you think is going to look best is going to be the right choice to make. Okay. So now you've got your C's all chalked up, and that was pretty easy. Let me show you how you would stitch out an Amish C curl border filled okay. with feathers. Okay, can't wait. This is easy. In this instance, I have chalked a miter line because I want to have all four of my corners look the same. It helps me to tie together the look of the, the whole border. Mm -hmm. Even though all the borders are freehand, or I'm sorry, all the feathers are freehand, they all look different. If the borders are the same, it adds a little bit of continuity mm -hmm. to the quilt. So I'm gonna start in the corner. I don't have to stitch those spines first, unless I want to, depending on what you're stitching. In this case, I do wanna stitch them first. So I'm gonna start my stitching line right up at the top. And again, you don't have to follow those lines exactly. You just need to be somewhat near them. You don't want to get too far off track because if, if it looks nice when you chalked it out, you don't want to vary too much when you're okay. stitching it out. Just stitch along. Because I'm stitching feathers, I want to end in a little tiny curvy teardrop that kind of looks like a Q-tip. A okay. little dangly Q-tip. Okay. I'm going to stitch back down to where this C joins the next C. Stitch up and over. And there's another little dangly Q-tip. Up and over. All the way to the end. So now I have a whole bunch of little C's all ended with dangly Q-tips and now I'm going to come back in and fill it in with feathers. And again we'll move back to that corner. This is a really pretty color thread you're using too. It is. It's a YLI variegated machine quilting thread. The color is California poppies and I think it goes beautifully with purple fabrics. Mm -hmm. Really shines. I'm just going to use a small circle template. I'm going to stitch two little teardrops. One to fill in my corner, reaching all the way out to the point.
and one echoing that same shape. Coming down and back to the spine. If I do that in all four corners, they're going to look exactly the same. It's going to tie things together really nicely. Now I've got my corner stitched. My first feather will come up. Come back down to the spine. Down. Come back up to the spine. If I you're back tacking backtracking over the uh... I am I'm just backtracking every other okay. top and if I were stitching this on a quilt I would make sure that those top feathers stopped a quarter of an inch in from the edge of my quilt Oh, okay um, because obviously like I said earlier I don't want to chop the tops off of my feathers when I put my binding on whoops missed that backtrack a little bit do you have any suggestions for backtracking like that um, you will need to practice, and you will need to practice a lot, but not as much as you think you need to practice. Okay. It comes much more quickly than you think it's going to come, and I can tell you right now, you are not going to hit every single one of your backtracks unless you have a computer chip installed in your head. <laughs> you will miss them. If you go to quilt shows and you look at the quilts that have ribbons on them, you're going to see that those quilts all have missed back tracks. Um, if you miss it a lot, you might want to rip it out, but if you just miss it a little bit, you know what? Give yourself some credit. You're not perfect. None of us are perfect, and neither are our feathers. So it's totally okay if you miss your back track. One of the toughest things that people have to learn with these feathers is how to fill these inside C shapes. Mm -hmm. This tight little C can be hard to fill, and the trick to filling that is to just curl big feathers around little feathers. Let me travel a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. So you do one side and then you do the other and uh -huh, then you do the other. So back and back forth. Back and forth, yep. Here's okay. a feather, here's a bigger feather curled around it. See how nicely that fills? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just curl the big ones around the little ones and keep on going. There's a little one, there's a big one, there's a bigger one. I'm going to put a little teardrop in my intersection, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to finish filling this space. Now I'm going to have feathers coming off of this spine that will curl this way around that teardrop. And I'll work my way out to the end of this spine, up, over, and back in, up, over, back in. Now I'm done with that space. Backtrack down. Now this spine is going to have feathers that curl this way around that little teardrop. See how it fills that space mm -hmm. so nicely? And once yeah, again, it's like magic. Mm -hmm. Now we'll throw a little feather in. Curl a big one. Curl a little one. Curl a great big one. You want to throw a great big variety of feather sizes and shapes in because that way when you have to make a weird shaped feather to get yourself out of a corner, it's not going to show. Mm -hmm. And remember when you're in one area, you have to fill that area before you go to a different area because otherwise you're going to have an empty space since you'll really have no opportunity to come back and fill it later. For example, this space I'm working in right now, I need to fill that with feathers while I'm there because once I move to a different Part of the quilt, I can't come in and throw giant feathers from the next C, for example. Mm -hmm. So you fill. And it I can see how important that teardrop is too, because that sets you up for both sides. Yep. You can curl right around Excellent. it. There's a horrible backtrack for you. <laughs> and if we were at home, oh yeah, that would be so ripped out of there. Small feather. Another small feather. Throw feathers out here. Oh, and you just keep going. It looks really fun. It, it looks really fun. And it's really super simple once you get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. And believe me, once you learn these feathers, you'll want to put feathers on everything in sight. 
Now let's say that you're doing a quilt that is not appropriate for feathers. Let's say it's okay. a manly quilt or an up north lodgy kind of a quilt. And I, feathers, I like lodges. You like lodges. <laughs> You've got one. Um, you don't want feathers. You want something a little bit more masculine. Mm -hmm. In that case, your layout would be exactly the same. Okay. Chalk your C's. Undulate that border as much as you need it to be to fill the space needed. Um, you'd stitch out your spine, but maybe you wouldn't end with little teardrops because we're not doing feathers, so we don't need teardrops. So for the design I'm going to stitch now, I would end just in little spikes. Just come out and go right back. Okay. Come out and go right back. Now let me show you how to stitch it out with pine needles and Terrific. pine cones. Ooh. Same thing on the other side of the spine. Fill that space as so much as you want. almost straight, but just a little bit of a curve. Just too. a little bit of a curve. If you don't know how to do it, go outside and look at a pine tree, and you'll see right <laughs> away. That's how you well, do I it. Well, I can do that, but not everybody can go out and look at a pine tree. <laughs> you, you're right. That you looks don't neat. don't have to worry about hitting your back tracks exactly. It's mm -hmm. okay if you miss a little bit. So this is a great design for a beginner. Just keep backtracking and backtracking. And when we get up to this junction, I'm going to show you what to do instead of a teardrop. And we're going to do a little pine cone. Here's our stem. Here's our top. There's our, the little cap on a pine cone. Just little half circles. Mm -hmm. You've got a little pine cone. Oh, that's adorable. Just come out. Finish your pine needles mm -hmm. to fill the space. Work your way back down. your way to the end of that spine. Just keep throwing in pine needles and if you want to throw pine cones in every here and there you can go right ahead. If you've got a blank space just back up and fill it. Boy that really puts down a lot of color for the thread too. Sure I like that. It does. And just imagine if you had a brown border and you were stitching mm. maybe with a variegated thread in woodsy tones mm -hmm. or autumn tones, think how beautiful that would be. Mm. And if you really wanted to dress it up, you could come back in with brown thread um, and really add a lot of dimension to your quilting and come up with a very cool border design that will really accentuate your quilt. Well, I, I just think this is fabulous. I can't wait to try it. Thanks, Linda. So thanks for being with us today. You're more than welcome. Thanks.